Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, a hit and run on Midland Avenue in Lexington puts three men in the hospital, and the driver is expected to face several charges later today. A Western Kentucky family dies trying to get to Minnesota after getting caught in floodwaters in Illinois. And we're tracking another flood watch across parts of Kentucky out there this morning. It runs through the day today. I will have the very latest coming up. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome into you on this Monday after a big weekend, a big holiday weekend. I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm Bill Bryant. Hope you had a wonderful holiday season and uh, I guess it continues as we head toward uh, New Year's later in the week. We are still in a first alert severe weather day mode because uh, potentially we could have some uh, tough weather again today. Here is meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Yeah, the problem is uh, we're very saturated from the rounds of rain that have been going uh, for the past several days and they've been producing a lot of heavy stuff as well. The ground, saturated, extremely saturated in some cases. So a flood watch is out for the entire area, at least here in central Kentucky and down to our south. Our friends in eastern Kentucky, you are also going to see some rounds of rain today, but some high winds uh, a little more likely as well. We all get in on some of the wind. At the moment, here's what our Defender Radar Network is showing. Just some showers moving out of here. What will happen, though, is later today we'll have another big push from our west with more rounds of showers and storms moving into the area. Here's what one of our models is saying. And it's suggesting we could see anything from a half an inch up to an inch and a half to two inches of rainfall by tomorrow morning. So between now and then, we could see some of those higher totals. Now, here's what's going to happen. When we get these rounds of showers and even some thunderstorms going, they have the potential to produce some of these amounts in one setting, one particular little case if we get under one of those heavier rain makers. So that's a big concern as well because we have a lot of energy to have some of those showers and thunderstorms of that kind of level go up through the day today and especially into the afternoon. We will track the chances a little more exclusively and a little more detailed too coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, see you then. Thank you. Well, the National Weather Service uh, is saying that strong weekend storms produced actually nine tornadoes across North Texas, killing 11 people. And crews are still trying to investigate all of the damage that was done over the weekend. Many are not so concerned about the damage, though. They're happy that they're still alive. That's I mean, the worst part. You can see the sky. <laughs> Despite the hole in his roof, Solomon McFoy knows how lucky he is. Never in my life thought this would happen to us. It was very, very terrifying. It was horrible. McFoy and his family were home celebrating his daughter's 17th birthday when the tornado sent everyone into closets and bathrooms in search of shelter. Never experienced anything like this in my life. and. It's never, it's going to be a birthday I'll never forget. Twelve of Whitney McFoy's friends and family members huddled together. I was just praying to God that he protected our house and nothing bad happened. And thank God we're all alive. The McFoy's home had considerably less damage than some of their neighbors. Many spent the day combing through debris to look for anything they could save. As night fell again, most like Ryan Malone looked to lock up as best they could. That we're all extremely lucky compared to some others and hopefully that everyone's doing well. That's all I can hope for. Damage is that can always be fixed, but we are very grateful that everybody is alive. Well, the nasty weather continues for other parts of Texas, but it is not rain. In Amarillo, more than 350 accidents have been reported from snow. After seeing above average temperatures for the start of the winter season, especially here at home, nature has finally decided to make the weather feel more seasonal in some areas. You can feel a little chill in the air out there this morning. Yeah. You know, so I guess the, the change is on the way. Other news now three men are in the hospital this morning after a hit and run on Midland Avenue in Lexington. The crash happened around 11.30 last night. The driver of the car was found on Leestown Road not too long after. WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us live from the scene. Good morning. Good morning, Rebecca. Police are still here. The crash reconstruction unit is now piecing together what happened at this intersection. Now, this intersection is one of the more unusual intersections in the city, but police are not blaming that for this crash. Instead, they say that the three people who were run over by a hit and run driver were hit by a man who was also drunk. Now, the crash happened here around 1130 last night when officers tell us a car that was heading downtown from Winchester Road ran up onto the sidewalk 
block at Midland Avenue. Three men who were walking toward Winchester Road were hit by that car. Instead of stopping to help, police say the driver left the scene. Someone reported seeing an erratic driver over on Main Street, so officers rushed that way. We're told they found the vehicle that had been damaged by the crash on Leestown Road and Taylor Drive near New Circle Road. Now the driver, ACL Arola, is charged with DUI, three counts of assault, and leaving the scene of an accident. The three men who were hit by the car all have life-threatening injuries. We have learned that one man is in surgery this morning, another is in critical condition, and the third is in serious condition but is stable. Now, while they are being treated for their injuries, again, police are here at this intersection. They are continuing to look for evidence. They are searching for anything that the driver may have behind. Now, Midland Avenue here is still closed this morning. The rest of the intersection is moving freely this morning. Officers are telling us that they hope to have Midland Avenue back open in the next hour or two, so ahead of some of that morning rush hour traffic. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Amazing there's still a scene down there at this yeah. hour. Yeah. Well, floodwaters can be dangerous, especially when you're trying to drive through them. One Western Kentucky family died in the rising waters in Illinois on their way to Minnesota. WKYT's Mike Byer is at our live desk now with the latest on that. Mike. Flooding has been a major issue not only in Kentucky, but for much of the Midwest. And now it's responsible for claiming the lives of a Kentucky family in southern Illinois. The Marion County coroner says three adults and two children drowned after the vehicle they were in was swept away and sank in a rain swollen creek. The coroner says the swift moving East Fork Creek carried the car off a low water bridge near the town of Patoka, about 60 miles east of St. Louis. This happened on Saturday night around 730. That's when investigators say the car drove into several feet of water before it was swept away nearly 200 feet downstream. First responders say they were able to make verbal contact with the occupants, but shortly after, the car became dislodged and sank, making the rescue impossible. Now the Western Kentucky family was traveling to Minnesota, but investigators say it's still unknown how they ended up in the rural isolated area. Meanwhile, their names have not been released yet. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. An Eastern Kentucky family has raised the reward for any information leading to their missing loved one. William Scotty Fannin has been missing since December 10th. His family last saw him in the Milo community in Martin County. This morning, a search crew is in the process of draining Milo Lake. The sheriff says cadaver dogs led them to believe there is a body there. The family is now offering a $2,500 reward for information leading to Fannin. Well, Laurel County has a new voluntary drug testing program, and it's creating a conversation between parents and kids. Give me a reason. That's what it's called. It's the name of the confidential program. It's a drug testing kit that Operation Unite, the Appalachia High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, and the London Police Department are promoting. Police hope that the kit helps teens make good choices. They don't want children in this area to become another statistic. They want parents to begin talking about drugs early on. The tests are free, take about four minutes to complete. Well, WKYT this morning, just getting started here on your Monday, 508 is our time this morning. Our first alert, severe weather day continues when we come back. Yeah, we're tracking rounds of heavy rain again today. So flood watch posted for a big chunk of the area. I will track all of it here in just a few minutes.